Talking tunes, and we're here with the the magical voice of the uh, WTRU days, WGRD days. The um, I don't know what, what did you what did you do before Mickey Mouse Club? Uh, Don Anderson. It's so far back. I don't think anybody out there remembers. Yeah, yeah. I'm having I'm having trouble enough myself. Can you do the Mickey Mouse uh, thing? I think you know how to do that, right? Yeah, weren't you part of the Mickey Mouse Club? I thought you were like Mickey or Bobby or <laughs> no, something. No, no, never made it. Never made it to Mickey Mouse. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was that was my kids were watching that stuff. Yeah. I decided, no, that was before. I was in the Howdy Doody era. Yeah. Okay. All right. Buffalo yeah. Bob Smith and Clarabelle. Clarabelle, of course, Ivy. was Captain Kangaroo later on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> At least they got a few lines when he was Captain Kangaroo, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a great, that was a great kid show. So you now you're going to tell us. I I got I've got a story that uh, you had told me, and I got to bring it out. But we'll talk about that in a, in a minute. So you have a couple things you wanted to pass on too, as far as what how how you're dealing with this uh, this virus or uh, how I'm dealing with the virus. Yeah, is that how you, is that we're talking about or no? I don't know. Maybe we are. <laughs> I'm just staying inside. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Yeah, like I say, we you you and I are kind of have have conversed quite a few times about uh, how we're getting our groceries. So yeah, okay. Anyway, go ahead. You you were well, yeah. It's kind of you know like being retired as I am and as you are. It's kind of like we all we self quarantine fifty two weeks out of the year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's different. We were talking. My wife and I were talking about it this morning, and and I I feel so bad for the businesses um, that normally rely on people coming in and out. Uh, even the concert promoters, um, the food stores, the little mom and pop places that may not be making it, uh, all these different, think about it, the ramifications are just wide. They are. And it's such a shame. I was talking to but, Beth, to Beth Beaman about it too, like right here in our little White Lake area here, there's a few places that, that couldn't even stay open at all. I mean, as far as, you know, some couple of the pubs and a few of the places that serve food, <laughs> They didn't. They couldn't find the way to do it to to stay open, and uh, I'm, I'm thinking, well, what, what can we do for these people? Because we want them. They're part of our community. We don't want them. You know, we don't want them going away when this whole thing is over. So, sure. yeah, but it's like, what what do you do? I don't know. You know, especially when you're when you're tied to the house, it's kind of hard to do anything. So that's for sure. <clears throat> we got. Um, there's. I saw. I saw today on uh, on Facebook. There was a. It's of course it's been canceled, but they these things pop up even though they've been canceled. I think it's kind of a, a normal thing that they pop up. But anyway, it was a Goodwill crawl. <laughs> Have you ever heard of that? The good it's like the fifth annual Goodwill crawl. It starts in Holland. No, but, that one escapes me. Yeah, but anyway, of course it's been canceled because it's like April twenty fifth or anyway. But it's it's. You know, there's no way that people are going to go out to Goodwill. Besides, Goodwills are all closed. And the other thing I saw in Goodwill too is that people are still bringing their junk over to Goodwill and just leaving it there. Well, uh -huh. according to the Goodwill people, they can't do that. They got to just throw that stuff away. You know, so now Goodwill's got to come up with the money to get dumpsters to throw that away because there's no way with the with the virus they're going to be able to you know put that stuff out on the shelves for people to look at later after no, the, that's a, that's a constant uh, yeah. overtime business. Yeah. So anyway, are you, this is probably a dumb question, but are the movie theaters closed? Oh yeah. Yeah. They're all closed. They are. Okay. Yeah. I, I just, uh, just ran through my feeble cranium just then. Yeah. I haven't thought about the theaters at all. And of course, Getty, Getty drive-in won't be opening like, like it planned, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, of course that might, I don't know about Getty driving cause you're just, you're in your car, but then you still got to get out of your car, you know? So I don't know. I don't know. Probably still have, close. Why do you have to get out of your car? Well, you know, I guess you could bring a bucket with you if you have to go to the bathroom and then you could bring your own <laughs> popcorn and stuff, I suppose. I mean, we always I, did when I was, a, my, sure, my kids know, were young. Self-contained. Yeah. <laughs> Here, son. <laughs> fill this up we'll just dump it out the window anyway <laughs> but the drive-ins it's usually two people male female or yeah well, that's another thing you, that's another thing so, you can't you can't have more than you know one person in a car so there you go okay unless you're you know you're gonna watch the movie solo i guess you know i guess you i don't know anyway it's just it's crazy it's it it's very crazy you, you, you try to try to say stay, you try to stay on the light side but it's it's pretty hard sometimes 
Anyway, what what do you got to tell me today, there, sir? I heard oh, you got some inter- interesting information. You were talking about that. You mentioned the Getty Drive-in right next door. Of course, were our true studios, and I thought of a promotion that we did that was it was fun, but it was taxing. It was it was probably one of the better ones over a couple of years span that we had at True, but it was called the True Bob Moore Honduro. Okay. You may recall Bob Moore Honda right. was a Honda. Um, I almost said this is too early in the morning. I almost said submarine business. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Moore Honda, and they had you know Honda motorcycles, and they had another brand of snowmobiles. I remember because I used to call on them uh, in sales. Okay, and I would sell them a package of a giant Easter Bunny or a giant Santa Claus, and of course the the package had commercial spots on the air and and uh, it had a box to register and we'd set those things up uh, and have them drive the snowmobile or have them drive the honda you know during the course and people would come in and register that's not what i was going to talk about uh somebody at true came up with it i don't i think it was probably tom shine before i handled the account tom was a uh, a fantastic sales rep that we had at true who was later promoted to our sister station wolf out in binghamton new york so I'm pretty sure that Tom came up with this with uh, with the folks at Bob Moore. And it revolved literally around a race in which a little Honda motorcycle, motorbike, received about a quarter of a tank of gas. And the true disc jockeys got on their Hondas and we raced around a course. I think, it, do you remember the Westgate Shopping Center? No, no, I don't, I don't remember. That was probably before me. That may not be the name of it. I, I really can't remember where. It was somewhere out by, by Meyer Thrifty Acres, Norton and, and um, Seminole Drive in Muskegon, Norton and Henry, actually, uh, back in those days. I think it was next to them. or Anyway, it was the Westgate Shopping Center, as I recall. And we had a little course marked out with pylons in a circle. And... <laughs> Now, these are, the, are these those little Honda 50s, those little tiny things? Yeah. Oh, well, well, no, they were actually, no, they were the little larger version. They might have been the 125. Oh, okay. All right. That's not too bad. I could, I just picturing you on one of those little Honda 50s. They are about like four inches from the ground. <laughs> anyway, that, that go ahead. Would have, that would have been more visually yeah. uh, exciting, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but this was radio. But anyway, we, um, we had this, this promotion. Uh, where the disc jockeys got on their Hondas and people had to guess who the winner would be and what time he would run out of gas. So we all got out there in our tuxedos. Now you, oh, I've got geez. a picture of myself in it. We had tuxedos. I had a baby blue tuxedo. And we got out there about <laughs> noon and started this Honduro. And of course we gave it all kinds of promotion on the air and we had a huge crowd out there to, to see the, the beginning of it. We thought that it would go probably an hour, maybe two hours at the most. We, yeah. wanted, it to, we wanted it to end maybe one, two o'clock at that particular time. And of course we were broadcasting this thing on the air with cut-ins. You know, here comes uh, Skip Knight around the far corner and Skip looks like he's about ready to drop. Maybe his Honda, his Honda, his Honda's telling him something. You know that crazy stuff like that. Yeah. Tom was doing. Tom was doing the narration. I think. So we got on these things about noon, and if you can imagine riding around and around and around, you get sort of cataclysmic. You, you know, you go into a state, a comatose state, which is kind of dangerous because you'll tip one of these things. We weren't going that fast. The object was just to, you know, burn the gas and go around and around. And people were coming out watching. I don't think they were throwing anything at us, but it was one of those types of things. (laughs) I would have been if I was, if I was alive then. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It was, it was just a, you know, a fun Saturday afternoon type of thing. Yeah. The station they promoted the daylights out of and, and, uh, and it worked. The only problem was we had totally miscalculated what a great, miles per gallon oh yeah things got. yeah so one o'clock came and we're still racing around you know and riding and right and we'd have i think every hour we had like a 10 minute break and we'd have one of the 
the other people, a sales rep or part-time disc jockey, that type, they get they get on the thing and run it around for us for about 15, 10, 15 minutes. So we, we did get a break. And it was a good thing that Bill Trapp wasn't riding around them because then we would have had Big D, Drewies, or Ham's Beer for a sponsor, you know. But, <laughs> and that could have been dangerous. But yeah, well, uh, no, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Bill was, you know, as you know, I, he's one of the best guys in the business. So one o'clock came and we're still going round and round and round. Two o'clock came and we're going round and round and round. And three o'clock, by this time, we're beginning to get blisters in a certain portion of our anatomy. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really getting to the point where going around in circles like this is pretty good. It's a big oval course, as I recall. But still, you you lose your train of thought. You you lose your, your I don't know what the word would be. I'm sure your tidy whities were probably going up your butt, but anyway, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I wasn't going to get that gross, but he, you're absolutely <laughs> correct. So, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, and we're still writing these damn things, and and now it's getting to the point where we're thinking, gee, this is absolutely the crowd had dwindled, you know, and yeah. what are we doing this for? Yeah. So I think kind of like watching about, NASCAR. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> So I think it must have been about 4.30, quarter to 5, 5 o'clock, something like that. Somebody sputtered, and the, the people who were riding, it was Skip Knight, it was myself, and Bob Klein, who was our midday uh, DJ at the time, I think it was just the three of us. Yeah. And then people like Jeff Ladd, who was a part-time announcer at the time, uh, I don't remember if Sandy Dune, now that's a great radio name in oh, yeah. West Michigan on the lake. Sandy Dune. Uh, he was he was doing six to midnight, uh, but these people would come in, give us a break, and so forth. That that helped a whole bunch, but we didn't know what to do. Finally, about like I say, four thirty, quarter to five, as I recall, one of them started to sputter, and finally ran out of gas. Huh. Oh, thank God, this is finally coming to an end. Then another one stopped. Well, that left me riding. Oh, so you, you're the winner. Well, what I found out is. Somebody had spiked my gas tank. <laughs> and instead of giving me a quarter gallon, whatever, they gave me probably, you know, like like a uh, little less than half a gallon. Oh, and I went and went and went. Well, we had the dance to do in Grand Haven that night. So it became a matter of, i got to burn this gas out. So I was looking around for maybe some kind of a turkey baster. I could siphon off the gas or whatever. But about 6 o'clock, 6.30, I don't know, somewhere in that neighborhood, I finally sputtered and ran out of gas. And I'm talking about physically, mentally, and the Honda. Yeah. And then uh, we drew the name, found out, you know, back at the station on Monday and announced the big winner. And it was just, it was a great promotion. It was just you know, a lot of fun. But it didn't quite work out as was supposed to. And back one then? Of things, one of those things you can't plan for. Back then, gas was like, what, 25 cents a gallon? <laughs> Exactly. It might, yeah. It might have been 26, 27. Yeah. Days, so. Yeah. I remember. I remember that. I remember, like I say, but I was just a, just a kid, of course, during those days, but I remember going to the gas station to get a gallon of gas for, you know, the lawnmower for cutting the grass. Mm -hmm. 25. My dad would give me a quarter, you know, and give you a whole gallon of gas just about anyway. But anyway. <laughs> so that was, the, that was the true Bob Moore Honduro. A lot of fun. Yeah. Good so, promotion. Okay, well, you know, let me tell you though that place that you're talking about, right next to the old Getty Drive-in. I mean, when I was there at Sunny FM, um, Sunny FM, it must have been that place because Sunny FM did some pretty crazy stuff too, as far as you know, break, dropping pumpkins off the roof and you know, just oh, you just. Mean, uh, you mean out of the, the same building? The same food. building, yeah, because Sunny oh, FM yeah. was there too, and I think one uh, Rock One Hundred One Seven was there for a while, and uh, yeah, but it was it that was just one of those buildings where you just got you just did all kinds of crazy stuff on the radio. I mean, those days are gone, though. I don't I don't think anybody does that kind of thing anymore. I don't know, not no. that I not around here anyway, not around Muskegon. Anyway, go ahead. The, the, well, the theater of the mind, as radio is, yeah, uh, and talking about what we were going to do on the air, you could really create some. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Best promotion, I think, or one of the best uh, we did in Grand Rapids was the uh, Corvette giveaway. If you answered your telephone, WGRD, don't say hello, say WGRD, and win a silver edition 
anniversary Corvette. Mm. It was a silver 25th anniversary 1979, I think. Doesn't that Corvette came out in 54? So that would be 64, 70, 79. All you had to do was answer your phone, WGRD. And it was the most fantastic promotion that anybody had come up with, at least in that market. Yeah. Everybody, I mean, literally, you'd call people on the phone and they'd say WGRD. Now, w, and, WGRD, of course, was a Grand, Grand Rapids station, but how far yeah, did, Grand, it, Grand, did, did it reach, Rapids, did it reach right. Muskegon at all? Oh, sure. Same okay. I thought it today. did. I was, I was wondering if it did. Yeah. Yep. Same, same as it does today. It became very popular over here. Okay. One of the things that probably gave true prob- uh, problems back in the day. Yeah. Cause I it, was a, it was a fantastic promotion that, uh, as I say, people all over the West part of, the, of Michigan over here by the lake and in Grand Rapids <laughs> answered our phone WGRD. Yeah. Finally. And of course, the thing with a promotion like that that you never know and the chance you take is somebody could have answered GRD on their phone the first week, the first day, the second week, the third week. It went on for, I think it was like two and a half or three weeks. Wow, that's pretty good. One day I'm down in the production room, which was on the lower level of the station, and I was, I was just coming up the stairs to go up to the offices and where the control room was, and whoever was on the air, and I can't remember for the life of me, doing afternoon drive at the time. It could have been uh, Johnny Walker. could have been uh, Sean Stevens. Somebody is, they, they come out of the control and say, what do I do? What do I do? So we look back, Ron White and I were together. What do you mean? What do you do? Something break in the control room? You know, the turntable? No, I got a guy on the phone. Just answer the phone, GRD. What do I do? We looked at each other and said, give him the Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> but he was so shaken. The, the jock that was on the air, he just, you know, the giveaway, uh, I don't remember what they cost back in the day, probably 30000 or Oh, yeah, probably. Was. Yeah. Uh, it was just fantastic. But it had everybody in the market uh, talking about the, the radio station. Oh, yeah. Well, you so, know, the, 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 one, the one that was big in Muskegon, of course, was the one that uh, Tim, Tim came up with, of course, the cash call. You know, where they raised sure. the money for, mm-hmm. and you, you know, would say how much money was in the, in the bucket or the, whatever it was. I remember when I first moved here to Muskegon, that was going on. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so, but that was, that was pretty big for, for Muskegon too, was the cash call because everybody was that listening. Was a, that listen- was a continuing, wasn't it? Where they yeah. had money each time. Yep. Every time. And then it was like, uh, I think it was like around the 20 or something. They, they announced the, mm-hmm. the money, something like that. But I remember my my mother in law at the time would would just have that radio on constantly <laughs> to listen to see the cash cash call so oh, she sure. could write it down. She won it once too. So, That's but a great yeah, promotion. Yeah, you know the objective of these promotions <laughs> is to get people to listen to the radio station, right? Obviously, and and you know build your quarter hour and your cum and the whole shebang. Oh yeah, I remember the the one that I was involved with. The Sunny FM was a hands on boat promotion where people had to pre- keep their hands on the boat who ever kept their hands on the boat the longest, you know, won the boat. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that was kind of fun. It was, it was mm-hmm. just, these people were nuts, man. <laughs> and the Jojo Gerard, I interviewed him and he was talking about, uh, the promo, one of the promotions they did about, uh, um, a pool. They, they would uh, put a pool in this, in this yard and people had to stay in this pool. Well, um, it got kind of cold. There was no heater in this pool. So, Things got a little problem. They had a little problem, and few people had to go to the hospital because they were getting getting too cold. But in this pool, they couldn't stay in there that long. But anyway, well, that's one of the things like riding around on a motorcycle, right? You don't plan on, you know. Yeah, but this is just the DJs that get put in trouble. The, that these were yeah. actual people that listened to the station. You know, oh. they had to go to the hospital. But anyway, um, the promotion that I got to talk about because I, I, you sent me a picture. You got, you got me joining a bunch of these uh, different things on Facebook here. And, uh, um, one of the things, uh, was the WGRD as far as radio and stuff, but there was a one promotion that you did for TRU, right? Was a TRU that we're talking about? Well, I, I have a feeling I know which one you're talking yeah. about. Excuse me. Just, just a minute here. <laughs> <laughs> I you almost want to leave that in, but anyway. Oh, you, you have to edit that. <laughs> I will, I will. <laughs> you're blowing your... Al- my year-round allergies. You're blowing your fenorgan. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So which promotion are you? I, I have an idea that maybe I want to. Uh, right now. Well, you got that picture of you and those th- I think it's three women, and oh uh, yeah, and yeah, WTRU yeah. read a promotion of eligible bachelor at the time, and you were one of the eligible bachelors, and they would they bid on you or something? Did they have to bid on you or what? Well, how? Well, they- you know, here we're talking about getting people to, to listen to your radio station and coming up with promotions. This did absolutely nothing. It was, and it's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done in my life, bar none. I was about to turn 21. I was a bachelor. I was doing afternoon drive on a top 40 radio station. And, you know, I, I had wonderful things to say about Fred Tascone when we talked uh, in our last interview. I think he may have come up with this. And for that, Fred, I rue the day that I ever met you. <laughs> <laughs> come on, those girls I saw in the picture, they didn't look too bad. Well, that wasn't the point. It was, what it was is. Because you didn't want to be a piece of meat? What? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you, you speak your mind. I do. Yeah. That's my I problem. I think the way it worked, and I'm, I think I've tried to forget this over the years, is women had to, or girls had to, go to some of the various dress shops in town, hostlers or Hardee's or vets or, you know, you remember those. Oh, yeah. West Avenue. And I think they had to register there to get a chance to win a date with me. <laughs> okay. I mean, good grief. And how many when did they, they came get? Out with this, I threatened to quit. I, I said, this is the most <laughs> ridiculous, asinine thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> and it, 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 it turned out to be more embarrassing than I ever thought. Any guys register? <laughs> <laughs> Not back then. Oh, okay, just check it. That, well, did I know of? I yeah, don't know. Uh, I, I, what they they said that the three girls would win a date uh, with this handy Andy bachelor guy, <laughs> <laughs> and dinner would be at uh, Lakos on. Uh, oh Rock yeah, Street, on Henry. Yeah, and all expenses, of course, for the girls. And so what happened is. They drew the names, they notified the girls, and I don't remember. There were probably only three entries is what happened. But <laughs> I, I don't know lucky we got three. Yeah. So because they did a little, you know, one of the neatest things about being on the radio. If you're this what a guy, dinner. This what a know, dinner. No, nobody knows what you look like. Yeah. They think, oh, man. This is, so, you know, I, I had to come out, come out from behind the microphone, which is very embarrassing. Right. No, so, I know. I know. I'm, I, I definitely have the face for radio. Believe me, I know yeah. all about it. Yeah. There you go. So they drew the names. I get all dressed up, you know, and somebody had picked up corsages for the gals. Did you wear the powder and blue suit? <laughs> did I what? Did you wear the powder blue suit? <laughs> I, I honestly don't remember what I wore. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Except that I digress here. You, that picture I sent you. Yeah. I think what well, I think one of them had I was in my Tommy Rowe coat. Oh, there you go. I got to introduce Tommy Rowe over at the um oh, what was the place in Grand Rapids that uh, had all the concerts? G R D and L A V used to sponsor concerts there. I can't think of it right now. I know it wasn't the bad end though, because that wasn't even built then, but anyway. No, that wasn't even there. Yeah. Oh, geez, what was the name of that? I don't I think about it while we're talking. But anyway, I got to introduce Tommy Rowe, and he had this really neat, checkered, black and white, um, not quite knee length overcoat. Okay. I said, I got to have one of those. Just so <laughs> I had gone all over Grand Rapids, Muskegon. I finally found one somewhere. Uh, but that's what I was wearing in that coat. That's what I wore on the outside. What I wore underneath, I don't remember. What a stud. What a stud. <laughs> yeah, it could have been. <laughs> I doubt it was the powder blue because I didn't tell you that when that promotion ended, um, the uh, Honduro, the winner got a pie in the face. Oh, good. Yeah. And I, I did. And so I don't know if that, <laughs> if that tux made it through or I got a picture of that. I'll show you sometime. And that was before you had to go to the, uh, the, the, what, the grand thing in Grand Haven, the bash in Grand Haven, right? The dance? Or yeah. The, uh, Honduro? Yeah, that was. Yeah. 
So anyway, this this was in uh, January of 1964. Okay. Uh, because the only reason I know that is because of that picture I sent you has the date. date yeah. Out of, yeah. yeah. So they can begin to try to put all these things together. Yeah, so, the women they had those those their hair where they was pushed up to the ceiling kind of thing. <laughs> you know, the oh, buffon or whatever they. Yeah, beehive. Yeah, beehive. That's what they call them, right? Yeah. <laughs> My wife tells an interesting story where she and a couple girlfriends were going over to a dance or something, Hess Lake, I think she said. And they kind of got lost, I think, and went through, not a stop sign or a barricade, but they went through some kind of a, uh, something at the end of the road they weren't supposed to and ended up going down this bumpy country road full of potholes and water and mud. And and the worst part about it is all the girls' beehives were compressed from bouncing on the ceiling of the car. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they were yeah. they were just you know, and my wife was Arlene was driving, I guess. There's no seatbelts back then either, so yeah. Well that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, uh digressing back to the corsages that they had provided and somebody drove the van, I think it was probably Skip Knight. And we met at the station, got in the van, went to the first girl's house, and I take this corsage and go in and, and you, I had to meet the parents and make small talk, and it was just, oh my, I can't tell you how embarrassing it was. <laughs> so then we go to the second, we go to the third, and we get these three gals, they're very lovely ladies. Uh, we pick them up and go to, uh, as I said, Lakos on Henry Street. <laughs> we go to the table that we were to sit at. Yeah. And, and what had the station done? But they make this little stand-up sign it was it was very poorly done <laughs> it was <a> sign. <laughs> poorly did match the uh it matched the guy they made it for and it had the winter date with don anderson three ladies and don i it had something like that and it stood up about two feet above the table and everybody in the restaurant was coming around and making snide remarks oh yeah <laughs> you know? Well, Fred must have thought you were quite the man when he uh, set you up with three ladies. I mean, come on, there you, here you go. Uh, it, but it, to put yourself in my spot. No, I mean, it, and and to this day, I I can remember, you know, how utterly embarrassing that was. But it turned out it was a nice dinner, and and uh, we had a good time and chit chat and yeah. We got, you, a, we got prime rib on the radio station for free. Did you get any numbers? Ah, uh, that's another story. We'll leave that one. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that one yeah, alone cause they, for now. Because you know, besides the beehives, they weren't bad-looking ladies that there were. You were there with. I mean, you could have. They could have really set you up with some. You know. Anyway, we won't go there either. Oh you know boy, what? I I think the guys were trying to find the box that all the entries were. Yeah. <laughs> the station were. Fortunately, I think Fred Fred got rid of it. So. Oh, so anyway, yeah. that was. Uh, and the night wrapped up, and we took them all home, and, and that was it. But it was just terrible. So did you have, like, a limousine or something to chauffeur you guys around, or did you drive? No, we, had, or? we had this old van that we used for the whole bank oh, highway. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you didn't try to <laughs> drive them all on your Hyundai. <laughs> on your Honda, rather. Did your you, little Honda 125 did, or whatever. Yeah, right. Did you get what I said? It was for the Homemakers Highway? No, I didn't get it. Sorry. It went right over we my had, head. We had this old van. We didn't, I don't know, True didn't want to spring for a nice, all lettered up, you know, yeah. radio station type van. So we had this old van that uh, Skip would go around and he would talk to people on the Homemakers Highway. Well, he didn't have, he didn't have a mobile studio, so he recorded it and then they would take it back and play it the next day during the midday, you know, right. or the more traditional housewife time, you know, nine to three. And he would play these interviews and... Wherever we stopped, people would call in to register to be on the Homemaker Highway. And uh, Homemaker stopped, Highway. The Homemaker Highway. Boy, that, that'd get you slapped today. But anyway, go ahead. Oh, my word. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we'd stop and we'd give them prizes, you know, movie theater tickets and records and that type of thing, you know. And he'd bring the tape back and play it. This leads me to another embarrassing situation. Of course it does. <laughs> <laughs> I caught the Homemaker Highway one week, mm. and Skip couldn't do it, so I was chosen to go out and, and do this uh, this 
this trip around Muskegon talking to, to ladies. One of the stops we made was at the Hackley School of Nursing. Mm. I don't know how many people remember that, but there was a oh, yeah, school yeah. of nursing. You remember that? Okay. They, well, they still got a picture up there in, in Hackley Hospital of the, all Do the they? nurses. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I get into the the nurses' place, quarters, or the schoolroom, whatever you want to call it, and it was all set up with beds. And the beds were occupied by a nurse. Okay. And... And the nurses had been practicing how to take care of a patient, evidently, when they are, you know, confined to their gurney or in the bed, that type of thing. And so I walk in and, well, I'm here to do the homemaker highway. And these gals are in bed and they all pull up the, the covers real tightly to their chin, you know, and here's this guy where he shouldn't be. Oh, so so they, talk- they were not in their right, their clothes at the time? <laughs> they were in these well, beds? evidently not, because <laughs> I went... To I went to, Jan was her name, and I won't mention last names. Yeah. Uh, her sister, no, Jan set up the promotion. It was her sister, Cheryl, who was in the bed. Ah. Now, if anybody knows these people, uh, my apologies, but I won't mention last names. Cheryl was in the bed, and she had the the, the covers pulled right tight to her chin, and and I asked her a question, and I can't remember what it was, but... Something like, well, how do you do this procedure? And it called it called for her, you know, to demonstrate. And so she stood up, sat up, I should say, in the bed. Well, the cover fell off. Okay. She totally forgot that she had this this cover on her, and it fell off. Now, how do you explain that on the radio? That was the end of the interview. Okay, well, she she was nude. I take it then. Uh, pretty much so. Yeah. So you did when you were talking, just kind of went, how about a, how about a, how about a, <laughs> it was, I just, you know, luckily it was recorded, moment. right? <laughs> this was all recorded. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember. I think they just cut that part out because I, it sure didn't air, but Oh my word, what do you do? Yeah. So you were pretty Red lucky. State. They set you up with in TRU days, they set you up with three eligible, uh, um, women to uh to date and to get stake with and you go to a hospital and, and see you know nude women i mean i tell I you what think, man what a job you had were, i don't think they were totally nude as i think about it. i'm sure they had undergarments on <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it was pretty in scary. your dream though they were totally nude i know oh, i know yeah <laughs> so those are a couple of more, more embarrassing situations i had in my tenure at wtru yeah one of the greatest stations I ever worked at. It was so much fun. Oh yeah, that's, a, that's what I always go back to my my sunny FM days. Even though I was only I was only there for probably a little less than two years, because um, I was just part time there. Man, I tell you, they did some stuff that was so much fun. It was just it was just fun. And then you had so many. It was especially I can imagine back in the TRU days, you had so many listeners. That was the same way Sunny FM was when I was there. It was just tons of listeners, and they'd call you all the time, and you'd be on the phone all the time. I mean, it was just a just a, a ball to go to work. I remember that. Oh, yeah. 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 The request line at night was just uh, hopping. Just, and I'd turn the request line usually open after 5 o'clock because the office staff didn't want those phones ringing out. They, we had to use the uh, the phones. The truth was too cheap to, <laughs> to get a dedicated line. So right. we used the regular station phone. I think we had one that rang really. <laughs> the what? The one that rang out loud. He did use that one for a request line. What do you mean? A phone, a phone line, a regular phone. Yeah. That rang like, well, it rang, it rang out in the offices and you oh, could see okay. it blinking in the studio. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I thought you thought you better rang in the studio. I'm saying that would kind of we suck like, when you're on the air. No, 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 no. We had, but you knew when to answer the phone in the studio. We had like four lines. I right, think. right. The, the one to the far right. I'm trying to think what our phone number was. It ended in I'm, seven two six three 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 or something like that. I remember Randy uh, Crow remembered the number at, at TRU. So there you go. Does he? He does. We were, of course, he was back I'm in sorry. seventy seventy nine. You were back in sixty six. Well, this this was in sixty three to sixty seven that I was on full yeah. time. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, I did part time before that. So, we'll, but um, if you knew, if you saw that line ringing by itself, it was Fred, or it was Skip, and something had to be 
imparted to the disc jockey in not so favorably a manner. In other words, <laughs> screwed up. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, that was we turn. I turn the lines open at five o'clock, usually five thirty, and my shift was done at six. And then the nighttime guy carried on from there. Well, we had a break. We had sound off at six o'clock, six o five until seven. Skip would do sound off, and then seven o'clock at night we'd go into the uh, the evening show. Right. Yeah, it's, it, it's funny though. All those old. <clears throat> I'm wonder what ever happened to all those old records of all those different shows that they used to have. Like, uh, you know, I remember at MUS when I used to run a lot of that, uh, those shows too, as far as the country shows that they would do with, you know, some of the great country stars back then, all those records, I think it just threw them all away. Didn't they? All that stuff. Are you talking about just the regular 45s we played? No, 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 no. The, 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 the shows that they used to produce, like the Casey Kasem's and all that stuff. They used oh, to be on okay. record, you know, way back then. <laughs> I mean, what do they? Casey was on. I'm not sure when Case. We ran Casey Kasem at GRD in Grand Rapids. I don't remember. That was probably satellite back crew. then. Yeah. All those records got pitched. I wish. Yeah. I, yeah. I would. I'd give anything to have, like you say, this, this the programs that came in produced on uh, vinyl. Yeah. And some of them tape. I remember Mark Mark Dixon one time showed me um, the room of all the. LPs that they've saved from the MUS days for all the years that they used to play records, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was just amazing. And they're all, you know, probably played once because they were put on cart songs are put on cart, you know? And, right. Right. Pewed once. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I wish I had the, the, uh, Pam's jingles that we had a true and a GRD. Those somehow, you know, I'm sure that with ownership change or format change, they sat in a drawer for a long time and then all of a sudden people were throwing stuff away and they, they met the trash can, but yeah. it, it'd be so neat to have those, uh, those jingles. I don't even remember the numbers, number, number four, or number 12, uh, the pans were all numbered and, uh, well, I just like Sonavox hang ups and well, it's just like you had that old, that old uh, microphone that you had way back from, I don't know, TRU or G GRD. I'm not sure. Remember where you got it from. The one I confiscated? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was a great, great old microphone. You know, ribbon, the, the ribbon type, microphone. The type, yep, the type of microphone that uh, people like Arthur Godfrey. Yeah, yeah. Put their, some of those. Would uh, cup their uh, ear. <laughs> cup their ear and yeah. talk on the mic. I never I never could figure that out. I never did either. either. <laughs> and a lot of, well, a lot of people now, even the singers. Yeah. It must. It must. Uh, so they can hear themselves, I guess. I guess. I'm yeah. doing it right now, and it still sounds lousy, so I guess it doesn't. <laughs> well, yeah, I, mean, I remember it when uh, when Grand Valley took over uh, WKBZ, and uh, they were just throwing stuff out left and right, too. And it was like, man, I got some, I, I, I could have got some really cool stuff, but I, you know, at mm -hmm. the time I didn't mm -hmm. think about it. But I did confiscate the one, the one mic stand that said WKBZ on it. It was a, you know, cast iron mic stand with WKBZ, and I, I gave that to John Van White because he continued with WKBZ. So that was something I gave him. I guess he's going to put that in the, uh, in the museum. So, you know, oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. That's the, that's the type of thing that, uh, that happens when, when stations are, are sold, new owners come in yeah. and throw stuff out. When we sold our station in South Haven, fortunately I managed to keep, uh, most of, if not all the 45s, we wow. had a, we had a pretty good 45 collection because we played a lot of the soft, uh, late fifties, sixties, uh, and seventies, not M O R, but some of the softer pop stuff that came out. Right. And in doing that, we collected a lot of the stuff that uh, was even more upbeat. Yeah. I mean, we'd I, go down, my wife and I would spend, we'd go down to Chicago for a shopping weekend and we'd, we'd hit up, I can't remember the name of the records. Was it Johnny's record store in Chicago or something like that? Just fabulous. You'd walk into this, this store, plate glass all the way around the windows and you walk in and be nothing but vinyl. Yeah. It's just thousands of, of, of probably square feet of vinyl. And that's what we would do. We would shop for certain titles, you know, and we'd come back and I'd have maybe 15, 20 titles to add to. And then uh, our operations guy would take and transfer them to tape. And that's how we accomplished that in the early days of our, oh, yeah. and that's back in 1981, 82, 83, we did that before right. we bought syndicated. So. Right. Yeah. It's what, um, there, you know, there, there's, there's about a few nice record stores here in the, in Muskegon. Uh, I remember the records and more. I don't know if you remember that they became CDs and more or anyway, they finally went out of business, but um, they were records and more and they had all the records. And <clears throat> I remember I sold 
<clears throat> during hard times, excuse me, during hard times, I kind of sold some of my great records to them, I remember. And, uh, but they were very picky about it too, as far as, you know, used records and stuff. But, uh, mm-hmm. but there's a used record store here that I'm, I'm kind of reclaiming my old LP collection from over at Groove, Groove Record Shop, which of course is closed right now. But, uh, you know, maybe when they open up again, I can continue on that. So. I always thought that I'd uh, never, never was able to, to this day, I'd like to get a big old Wurlitzer or what was the other brand of, um, uh, the big record players that you find in, in bars and candy store, you know, that, Oh, you know you, the about. old jukebox, you mean, or yeah, the jukebox. Yeah. That's the term. Uh, I always wanted one of those. And I always thought that I'd take this collection that I have and put them into that Wurlitzer. But I find out now they're making Wurlitzer, uh, reproductions yeah. to play CDs. That's no fun. No, that's no fun. <laughs> you can't yeah. see the record coming out and dropping onto the turntable and then the needle coming over and playing, yeah, the, you know. The, especially the back then with the, the old jukeboxes, the needles weigh, they're the arms of the knee, and with the needles, they weighed about 10 pounds and the needles look like spike nails. But anyway. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. So those 45s will wear out pretty quickly, but anyway. But it's an interesting business, as we both know, and the 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 things behind the scene are what make it even more interesting and, uh, and the different things, how you plan to do the promotions and right. what works and what doesn't, you know, they don't all work as you want them to. That's kind of right. like the Honduras. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, you know, we did, uh, when we did the talking tune show 20 years ago, we did of course the spam jam, which was kind of a lot of fun. We'd, we'd, uh, had uh, ch- a chili cook off with, but you had to use spam to cook the chili we had one of those and we had you know elvis impersonators and you know we, you had to use what spam spam to make chili yeah yeah so and this one guy his name was renee but his one guy made some chili out of spam and it was it was amazing man <laughs> it was really good so yeah we that well, was, I guess stuff could, like that was fun you can put just about anything in uh, chili i hadn't yeah. thought about spam yeah. but uh, yeah well you know I don't think about spam much because yeah, I want my heart to keep beating. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever tasted spam. No, hey, you know what you're missing. A lot missing, of people man. like it. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. I guess they they take and slice it up and fry it. And, oh yeah, do a lot of stuff it, with it, it. I think it depends on what section of the country you come from for spam. I think we should do like a. Um, of course, it'd be kind of expensive, but I think we should do spam sculpturing. So. That would be kind of fun. Spam what? Sculpturing. We could see what you could sculpture out of spam. You know, I think we're beginning to reach for things to talk about. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But we had fun. I mean, you know, we we talked to the the spam ambassador and the spam queen over there at Harmel Foods and uh, and, uh, it was, it was, you know, we, they, they'd sent us stuff to give away. We had like the spam bank, the spam hat, the spam boxers, spam t-shirt, which I had my spam t-shirt, man. I love that spam t-shirt and I wore was that this thing on, out. Was this on your original talking tune show? Yeah. That was the original talking tune show. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 20 we, years ago. Yeah. Well, actually I started it actually on the, at KBZ when I was doing the talk radio back in KBZ days. But, um, yeah, the, when we had the most fun was the talking tunes. So. What year was that? Um, boy, ninety-seven. I think it was ninety-seven, okay. ninety-eight, something like that. So, but yeah, it was that, and then of course in the uh, early nineties, we did it at uh, WKBZ. So, but yeah, it was it was always fun. I was <laughs> we said fun. Nobody can say that we didn't have fun in radio. That's for there sure. There you go. So there you go. Nothing better. I mean, you don't get paid much, but uh, hey, you have fun. So, well, uh, sir, um, good luck on your grocery hunting. Yeah, we're still looking for more toilet paper. So if anybody has, let me give a phone number. No, I won't Uh, do that. Call Andy, Andy. (laughs) Thank you, Oscar. It's been real. Yeah, that is always always real when I talk to you, man. When we always go on forever. Who knows Real if anybody listens to us, but hey, Real we, embarrassing. That's yeah, what it's we have fun anyway. So yeah, that's for sure. That's all that matters. It. It's, it's fun talking to you. Talking Same with you. And, uh, uh, talking tunes. Talking tunes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we got to keep it going. We got to keep, we got to try to entertain people because that, there's enough stuff going on right now. That's not very entertaining. So got to try to entertain somehow. All right, buddy. You take care. Okay. Thanks, Oscar. Yep. It's been fun.
Bye. Bonne soirée. Bye.